Welcome back to the YouTube channel for BamaOnline.com. Travis Schreier, Senior Analyst for BOL, alongside Recruiting Analyst Joseph Hastings. It is time for another installment of Signy Spotlight here on the channel. And this time, Joseph going to help us break down Amari Jefferson, a six foot, two hundred pound wide receiver from Chattanooga, Tennessee, and boy, Joseph, kind of a route that took Amari Jefferson some different places throughout his recruitment, from baseball to football, through a coaching change, a little bit of everything here with Amari. Yeah, so he was initially a Tennessee baseball commit, committed there back in summer of twenty twenty one. You know, stayed committed to the Volunteers. Uh, for a couple of years, but throughout that process, he started to pick up some offers on the football side of things. You know, you started to see the likes of Georgia, Alabama, Tennessee's football program. Others dip into the mix for him. So he kept his options open throughout his entire recruitment as it pertains to football. And then it was more so just a matter of determining which one was going to factor in more for him in the end. Was he going to be going the baseball route, focusing on the football route more so. I mean, he's a talented baseball prospect. You know, he participated with the Pittsburgh Pirates Scout organization at Al in Alabama, in the state of Alabama, over the summer for a tournament. So, you know, he's, he's a highly regarded baseball prospect, but ultimately decided to put his focus on football. So that ended up determining his final decision. Came to the conclusion that it was going to be Alabama committed to Nick Saban and his football staff um, in early August 2023. And honestly, it was a relatively drama-free recruitment. He did go to the Tennessee-Georgia game, but that was as a fan with some friends. Uh, stayed loyal to Alabama, you know, visited them multiple times, you know, during his commitment. So, you know, he stayed loyal to them. But then obviously you had the departure of Holman Wiggins, wide receivers coach, in early January. You had the departure of Nick Saban via retirement. Um, even Joe Cox, um, you know, who's now at Ole Miss, he played an instrumental role in recruiting Jefferson and talking with his family, building those relationships. So, you know, I had to take that that visit to Alabama a couple of weeks ago, um, make sure that everything was good, meet with Kalen DeBoer and the new staff, and uh, he and his family came away impressed with everything. So, yes, there was a lot, you know, a lot of ups and downs, as we saw with a lot of these, um, you know, Alabama recruits in the 2024 class, but he stayed loyal with the Crimson Tide. Let's go back to the start when Amari was committed to Tennessee for baseball. Uh, huge production on the football field. I guess that junior season there at the Baylor School there, the prestigious Baylor School in Chattanooga, Tennessee. Is that when the switch sort of flipped for him in terms of his recruitment on the football field? Yes, uh, as it pertains to, you know, receiving offers, gaining interest, it kind of started in the summer before, you know, he he was, you know, playing football throughout his high school career. He did injure himself. Uh, I believe it was his freshman year of high school. So he didn't really get to play football that much that first year. Uh, but, you know, the interest started to pick up there as it pertains to what he wanted to do, what he was going to focus on. You know, he was still 50 50 with uh, baseball and football when I met with him back in May 2023. You know, I drove up to the Baylor School, beautiful campus, by the way. You know, just it's an, it's an incredible campus. I saw a football game there, um, you know, a few months later. And, you know, I got, but I got to meet with Amari and he told me, you know, he's still deciding between what he wants to do, like what's going to factor in most. It's, it was 50 50. And he ultimately, once again, came to the conclusion that it was going to be focused on football. But yeah, his, his football recruitment really picked up around that junior season time uh, time frame. And is it pretty much a situation at that point where Alabama gets in there along with Tennessee football starting to make a push? And you mentioned Georgia too, because there was a tie on that Baylor school team. Obviously his coach or his quarterback, Whit Muschamp, the son of Georgia assistant, Will Muschamp, I guess that had something to do with that. Yeah, that was definitely a factor then. You know, we were talking about this off air with Chattanooga, like where it's located. It's not like, you know, it's deep north of Tennessee or anything like that. It's, you know, it's close to that Georgia line and fairly easy to get to these schools that he was considering, Alabama, Georgia, um, you know, Tennessee, obviously. Uh, but, you know, Alabama actually dipped into the mix in March 2023. So, you know, a little bit later into the process, he did visit for a game. Uh, you know, in the in the season prior. So there was some familiarity there between him and the staff, but got offered during that junior day visit, 
same junior day that uh, Caleb Odom got offered on. So, you know, when we talk about these junior days, you know, that are going to be coming up in the spring and the one that we had in February 3rd, pay attention to them. You know, you never know who could ultimately end up in this class as evidenced by Jefferson and Odom. But, you know, Alabama dipped into the mix in March. You know, he was able to make it down there. You know, he took his first official visit was to Alabama. And, you know, I talked with him and his father after the trip and it really felt like it, it was going to be Bama. You know, they kind of knew it, um, you know, wanted to take a couple more official visits wanted to visit in late July on an unofficial, just one more time, meet the new baseball staff. Um, and, you know, it came away very impressed by what the Crimson Tide had to offer. And in terms of what Amari has to offer, we'll take a look at that right now. We've got some video here that we'll run through. And this is a guy at six foot and 200 pounds. You know, physically, you think about some guys Alabama has on its roster right now, a Kendrick Law. Uh, mm -hmm. Even a Jeremy Bernard coming over from Washington. Uh, you think about wide receivers into today's game, Joseph. A lot of times you're thinking 6'1", 180-ish. Uh, but yeah. there are plenty of guys like this. I think a Randall Cobb of the past. Guys who can work inside like this in the quick game like we're seeing from Amari. And then also use them in some different ways on the outside. I think the first thing that stands out, especially when you meet Amari in person, is he's built like a running back. You know, especially, you know, with his lower body, he's got he, he's got big legs. You know, he can handle contact, run through contact. And then you see him as a wide receiver, and, and you start to be really impressed by his ball tracking ability, his field awareness in general. You know, we're going to see here at the end on, on this clip, and he also had one in the state championship game where he's able to – he knows exactly where he is on the football field, lines himself up perfectly, gets – you know, even both feet in bounds, you know, for, for the, you know, NFL projection um, there. And, you know, I, I got to see him in person. And another thing that really stood out here, you won't see it in the clips, is just his blocking ability and intensity and, and, and willingness. You know, that that's the major thing when it comes with wide receivers and blocking. You know, how willing are you to go and initiate contact? We saw that with aforementioned Jeremy Bernard. He had a big uh, block against USC this past season. So, um, you know, th that's something that also stood out to me. He can work inside, outside. That's something that Alabama really likes about his skill set. Um, I've seen him in person, you know, be used in jet sweeps as well. Uh, you know, he he can pretty much kind of do it all, um, you know, work in the middle of the field. That's something that Andre's Charles Power talked about in terms of his projection for Alabama at the next level, being that kind of guy who does the dirty work and uh, works the slot. Uh, but you can also put him outside just become um, – he's got some height to him. You know, he's got some – a, a good build and a good frame. So, you know, really interested to see how he's using that Kalen DeBoer offense, but, you know, he can kind of do a little bit of everything. Yeah, we saw him earlier in these clips work the post for a deep ball touchdown. We saw him work the go route on the outside. And this is a clip right here where I think we truly see where his body type and his strength pays off. This is a quick game. He makes a guy miss, but he also has the strength too yeah. after the catch and balance to maintain his leverage and then make another guy miss on his way into the end zone. So some good stuff here for sure. We'll see it here in the red zone where you think about a guy like Amari Jefferson and uh, Muschamp, understandably, really locked in to Amari as he works a corner route and gets both those feet down, as you talked about earlier, for a touchdown in that particular clip as well. So you talked about it, JoJo, in terms of the coaching change and how all that came into play. And Alabama, even late in the early signing period, added a guy like Bubba Hampton to go along with Rico Scott. And then we learn uh, on signing day that, in fact, Ryan Williams was going to be a part of this 2024 wide receiver class for the Crimson Tide. What, was there any apprehension that you detected through all of that with – that meeting, as you referred to it, with Amari and his family and this new coaching staff and maybe getting a better feel for Jamarcus Shepard taking over those wide receivers for the Crimson Tide. I really didn't get any apprehension as it pertains to, you know, just the wide receivers in this class, you know, the stacked wide receiver room. One, you know, you can probably make the case that Alabama has a top three, if not top one uh, wide receivers class. It's that good. It's that well-rounded. But I didn't uh, determine, you know, um, wasn't able to detect any apprehension on Amari's side as it pertains to that. You know, the biggest thing was just about meeting these coaches, you know, building these relationships. You know, if you had like a Joe Cox, you know, retained in terms of some familiarity, I think it may have uh, been a little bit easier from the relationship standpoint. But he, he was pretty... 
um, you know, honest with me heading into that visit. He's like, I don't know anyone. You know, I don't have any relationships here. I wasn't recruited by Washington. I don't know Jamarcus Shepard. I don't know Kaitlyn DeBoer. Uh, so he had to meet them, get to know them. His parents did too. Um, you know, they had a call with Coach DeBoer prior, you know, to that visit being taken. But it was more so about meeting them in person, seeing what the plan was that they had for them. And, you know, I I, I think the biggest thing was, you know, Coach Shepard, you know, um, being able to meet him. Uh, you know, be the high energy coach that he is and the development, the proven track record that he has. And uh, Mark dropped a pretty interesting note saying that he believes that Coach Shepard actually may have been his position coach, even if Coach Saban had stayed, you know, because obviously you had the departure of Holman Wiggins prior to Coach Saban's retirement. So that kind of goes to show that Shepard may have been on, on Bama's radar prior. But, uh, you know, the, I, I thought that was an interesting tidbit from our conversation. And, you know, uh, you know he, he got to have all those questions. He, he told me he told it to me this way. All his questions he had about Alabama were answered on that visit. All five signees that didn't enroll at Alabama as a mid-year Minus Ryan Williams, obviously he hadn't signed to that point. All five signees that took the visit that um, that weekend that Amari did at the end of January, uh, you know, it was all about building those relationships. And for Amari, he got to establish that with Coach DeBoer and Coach Shepard, and feels pretty good about where things are going with Alabama. So where does baseball fit in with all of this now? I understand he has a senior season there of mm -hmm. high school baseball uh, that should be cranking up any time now if it hasn't already, uh, and then projecting that towards uh, the University of Alabama too. Yeah, honestly, it's kind of up in the air, I would say, um, you know, more for from a speculation standpoint, you know, Mari's saying that his plan is to still do baseball and football at the next level. You know, he's he's got his senior season, actually going to be having a tournament at IMG Academy. I'm hoping to go see him at uh, this spring. So, you know, that that's something that he plans on doing. But he, we saw with Dylan Lonergan, that was, you know, the, the plan too, you know, to participate in both. And it's kind of up in the air as to what's going to happen with him. But, um, you know, with Amari, you know, obviously football is the priority. Like he said, you know, that's the that, that was the driving force in the decision that he made in August. Uh, we'll see if he tries to do both. It's tough. It's tough even doing one of these sports uh, at, at the college level, let alone two. So, you know, we'll see where things go. But as of right now, that's his plan to try and do both uh, when he gets to Bama. And he should have experienced or benefited from the experience of the All-American Bowl, right? He was a yes. participant there. Uh, maybe got to establish some or reestablish some relationships with some some classmates for Alabama in 2024, maybe help ease his mind from that regard. Yes, he, he got to talk with Xavier Brown, Payne Woodyard during uh, their time at the All-American Bowl. He got to once again catch up with them during his official visit. You know, um, J uh, Jeremiah Beeman was also there in San Antonio as well. So you know, got to see some familiar faces, you know, build some bonds. I, I think that was, you know, you talk about Rico Scott, uh, the other wide receiver uh, signing who's set to enroll in the summer, you know, alongside Mark Jefferson and Ryan Williams. Rico said that a big thing was the bonds that he had with the 2024 class. Uh, you know, those relationships that he built, you can't replicate them. And that was the main re one of the main reasons why he stuck with Alabama and sticking with them. You know, so I, I imagine Amari is along the same lines. You know, for him, it was more so about getting that reassurance with the with the coaching staff. But, yes, you know, uh, Peyton Woodyard, Xavier Brown, some of those guys that he already knew from the All-American Bowl and uh, the wide receivers class, he's built some uh, good connections there as well. So definitely some added reassurance there. Opportunity certainly there for all these receivers, with Jermaine Burton moving on, Isaiah Bond moving on, Malik Benson Moving on, so uh, going to be a fun spring and summer into fall camp, no doubt about that. Yep. Mari Jefferson, physical, instinctive, good at attacking the football in the air. Going to be fun to watch, I think, during his time at the University of Alabama. Joseph, man, appreciate you taking the time, providing unparalleled insight as we spotlight Amari Jefferson here on the YouTube home for BamaOnline.com. Do it again soon. Thanks, Joe. Looking forward to it. Thank you, Travis. For Joseph Hastings, Travis Schreier, thanking you. And if you haven't already, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Just hit that subscription button, turn on those notifications. You'll get all of our video content right here as it drops. Until next time, so long, everybody.